Right on. All right, so it is November 12th, 2017. The day after Remembrance Day, right? This is true. <laughs> Jared and Rich. All right, so uh, you want to let's go into what's – so let's go over the my – The fourth there, the se seg with uh, X2 or something like that? Well, no, well let's, let's start out with like a generally this entire conversation in general. What do you want to cover? Well, first of all, do your disclaimer there if for uh... – oh, Okay, yeah, so if we cover – uh, any topic that gets into my professional realm, then uh, I just want to make it clear that anything I say here is my opinion, mine alone, and ha is it, in no way uh, the opinions of my employer or, or, or anyone I work with or anyone I work for. Um, and I alone am responsible for what I say there. All right. So uh, you, ask, you were asking what? About the uh, uh, and and I'm sorry, just 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 real quick because uh, like this relates to trading. Um, my opinions about the value of something should not be taken as any kind of uh, financial or trading advice uh, by by no means. So yeah, it's amazing that we have to say that. that. You know, yeah, <laughs> you are responsible for your choices and decisions. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So this reason, I'd like to know why the fork, the SegWit X2 was, if there is any out there online, this is well, why. Real quick, before we go into that specific topic, why don't we state what the general our general conversation is going to try to cover? Is it health, personal expertise? No, uh, no, just that for now. Because I can okay. make little clips I'm recording and I can make little clips or even a few minutes. And then we gotcha. can go to, uh, I want to, have okay. more narrow focus issues and topics okay so why don't we hit hit up with uh what you questions you're having and you're asking me about bitcoin and the most recent non-fork uh this was a fork that was supposed to happen anyone that's not familiar with that a fork is when and i'm you know i'm gonna do my best to explain this there's people out there who can do a lot better than i can um so a Cryptocurrency project is most of them are open source. You can find the code wherever you, you know, whenever where uh, online, usually GitHub. Uh, it's just it's published out there for everyone to access. And these people, a bunch of a community comes together to write that code. Well, when that community disagrees and it goes their separate ways, we call that a fork. And there's different kinds of forks with different um ways of trying to uh, influence or force the community to make a choice one way or another now um the this most recent fork was called uh the the 2x so segwit happened in august uh, i think it was august 31st yeah um so SegWit happened in August, and what ha and what SegWit is, it's called Segregated Witness, and it is like adding a new protocol on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. So Bitcoin does one thing pretty good, and that's B money. The problem is that the uh, demand has grown to where it can't satisfy, it can't process as many transactions as people want it to process. So their solution was to add this another layer of processing on top of the Bitcoin blockchain, as opposed to pursuing um, methods like uh, making the, the initial chain capable of processing more transactions. What they wanted to do was say, okay, on with this, on the second level of processing, we'll do smaller transactions up here in a different way and then we'll take those as a block and add those into the blockchain. Uh, so because that would save on the processing power or, or the processing resources necessary to put it into the base, the first Bitcoin blockchain. So you'd have the Bitcoin blockchain, then you would have segregated witness, you know, and that and that would that was the proposed solution. Now, Andreas Antonopoulos is a guy who I've always followed. Um, in the Bitcoin world, and um, he gave he gave this explanation for 
why to do things that way. And from my understanding, he's been around in the technical world since um, the internet was around. You know, he the way he described it, like he had like one of the first like blocks of IP addresses. Uh, wow. It's like it, like corporations, you know, you can't get that now. You know, you, you would have to be a ISP in order to to get access to something like that. So that's the kind that's where he started out, and what he was saying was that, um, and again, I could be getting this wrong, I'm do my best. Uh, so you've got this base layer of transacting something, and as opposed to uh, going back and modifying that base layer, it's better to kind of add something else on top of, engineer something else on top of that. I'm not entirely sure why, I, from my, like, I can imagine that it, it, you know, if you mess with that base layer, maybe you screw something up and it, it was secure and it was working fine. And now it's not because we experimented and it's not, you know, so it's kind of a conservative push. Like, well, let's not, let's not touch that. Let's go on to something else. You know, let's, let's, let's add something that relies on that. Um, and what he was saying is that being in that industry in the internet industry, since, you know, for as long as he's, it's been around and he's been involved in it. He's like, that's the way we have continually solved these problems. We add layers on top. Um, now, which that's influential to me because he's been in the industry for that long. Then again, that's not money, you know? So what we're trying, so like is Bitcoin a like transaction financial is it a bank clearinghouse or is it supposed to be money, more money? You know, that's kind of the argument there. Well, um, it, 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 it's not necessarily just one thing or it should not just necessarily be just one thing, just one, one function. Well, it's, it's perhaps. Oh, so, perhaps. so I'm mistaking. Blockchain can be a ledger, can be used as a currency, but Bitcoin as itself. Okay, right. I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, like, like Bitcoin. And it, th this is my take on it that there will always be one proof of work coin. And the way proof of work works um, is that you have to, in the real world, okay, you have to actually do real world work in order to process these transactions. There has to, so there's A, uh, computing power used like like better processors people are competing to create better processors to crunch these numbers to cryptographically secure these transactions and you've got to burn electricity now there's people that you know qq about that because oh you're wasting electricity it's like you are not wasting electricity it is doing an incredibly vital job it is securing the blockchain um <clears throat> so and now the other most popular way of doing it, as opposed to proof of work is proof of stake, which is where things are, there's less of a uh, dependency on something occurring in the real world other than human judgment. Okay, does that make sense? Like Bitcoin, you need, you got to have the processing power put into it. You got to, and you have to. Sorry to interrupt. The processing power is, in other words, is that like the mining power? Yes. So okay, with, with, with Bitcoin, you um, people, the miners are competing to guess essentially because these mathematical problems are so difficult. We don't know how to pro we don't know how to solve them. The best way is to just guess as much as you can. So you build computers that guess as fast as possible. What cost uh, electricity? Now the fact that you're competing with each other means there's an incentive to develop better machines or buy more of them, control more of them to, uh, to process, to, to make those guesses. Right. So now what that reflects, the fact that, it, that uh, you have to, there's that competition in there, is that who's the better capitalist? Who's better at organizing people and allocating resources? Who's the better organizer to, uh, to peaceful, voluntary organizer to, coordinate people into solving these problems to secure the network 
So, so that's why I believe there will always be a proof of work coin because there it'll be a direct reflection of the best market actor. Does that make sense? Right. 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 Now, and, and so that, and then that doesn't mean I think that you know there's only going to be that one coin. It's the only one. You know, I think there's room for plenty of coins to do plenty of awesome things, but I believe there will always be one. Um, there will always be one proof of work coin and the rest of the marketplace will be oriented around that coin in some way uh, because of the, the nature of what it is. It's going to be a signal about uh, where the market is going. <clears throat> and that coin could be not just necessarily Bitcoin. Not necessarily Bitcoin. It could be it, Ethereum. Uh, it, it, could, it could be Ethereum, but let's but, see. Ether Ethereum is going proof of stake, though. Oh. They they are proof of work now, and they might be hybrid proof of work, proof of stake now, and they I could I could have this wrong, but from my understanding, Ethereum is going proof of stake. They're adding an algorithm called Casper, which is a proof of stake algorithm, and uh, basically the innovative thing there is that um, whenever you're staking coins, uh, proof of stake is that you have so many coins and you stake those on the network in order to uh, verify the rest of the transactions. Okay. Now, with Casper, if you try to do something naughty, chances are you're going to get caught. But some of those coins you stake, or all of them, I don't know, but a portion of them you get punished and those coins go to other people. So if you try to lie uh -huh. about a transaction, then you so there's there's a game theory incentive there for you to be honest. Well, it does much. it does remind me <coughs> about your your coin idea, which we don't have to talk about here in details. But you know, yeah. remember from months or weeks ago, you, you you shared this idea with me. Yes. Now now let's do that in a different clip, just yeah. so we can choose yeah. to yeah. do sure. yeah. Because um, I, I I go on. I was, I've had some more ideas about that. I'd love, oh. I'd love to talk about it, but uh, right. I would want to take the time and choose. Like, is that something I want to share or not? I'm not entirely sure. Right. That's why I said, you know, we may not want to share it here. Uh, mm -hmm. Details about that. But all, uh, so going back to, um, so what I read in uh, Crypto Compare and Joe Salante YouTube channel, in one of his very recent video about, uh, you know, they. The, it didn't happen. The non-fork. It didn't happen. So, yeah. do you okay, know so any reasons why? I, I can tell you why. So, you've got these two different communities, and it's called the core community and the 2x community, or, or Segwit 2x community. So, the core community wants to do that, you know, add a protocol on top of the blockchain instead of messing with the blockchain itself, okay? Segwit, the 2x community, they they wanted to just double the uh, the block size, which right is now, something like twenty one million, and they want to double that. Does that make sense? No. Nope. What the is the tw twenty one million thing? Twenty one million refers to the number of bitcoins that will only ever exist. Right. Is that going? Is is that? Do they want to change that too? No. No. It's touch, not. It's no not related touch. at all. Okay. Okay. Go really, on. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's arguing about changing that. Okay. Um. So yeah, the 21 million is the number of Bitcoins that only ever exist. Bitcoin right now has a two megabyte blockchain, or, or, or yeah, it's a two megabyte blockchain, or two megabyte blocks, I'm sorry. So that basically what that means is that each link in the chain is only two megabytes big. Segwit 2X, they just wanted to double that. That's where you get the 2X from. They wanted to go from, you know, they bring it up two times. So from, from a, a two megabyte blockchain, or no, I'm not sure. It's either a two or four megabyte blockchain, but whatever it is, they want, just wanted to double it, just double the size of the blocks. Okay, so so ultimately, if they would have gone ahead with that, with the fork, uh, would that would that have like half or reduced tremendously the Bitcoin valuation, which was is seven thousand or so now? Uh, I, well, I, I've got some news about that. I'm uh, listening. Well. Because, well, I, I'll get there because it's, I want to tell this in order because it's okay. relevant. Uh -huh. uh, um, so, no, it, 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 not necessarily. 
Okay, good. Excellent, right? I mean, that's great news now because we wanted Bitcoin holders wanted to go completely. We, we wanted to continue to, to go higher and higher, right? Um, it, well, it, it depends. It depends. Like those that want to invest in Bitcoin, just keep it as a store of investment, like a value, like their goal. It depends. You know? Did you, do you still own your Bitcoin cash? Because when there's a fork, this is something I didn't say earlier. When there's a fork, if you hold like four Bitcoin at a certain address, uh -huh. what happens is now you own four Bitcoin and four Bitcoin cash. Okay, I don't even know what Bitcoin Cash is. I did read it a few times in uh, Crypto Compare, uh -huh. where, which I uh, and I subscribe email and stuff like that. But can you explain quickly what that is? So Bitcoin Cash was a fork a couple months ago, and basically what they did was they said, "Well, we're going to make all these changes," and they forked off from the original Bitcoin. Whoa. So, the, like, for one of the one of the differences, they have eight megabyte blocks. Okay. So, and and uh, so anyone who owned so many bitcoins on a certain address automatically got so many bitcoin cash. Additional or so much. Okay. okay. Additional. Uh, now, you may or may not, depending on what kind of wallet you had it on, you may or may not have to do some work in order to obtain that bitcoin cash, but it's there. Okay, how is that as useful or not as useful or more useful than the Bitcoin itself, Bitcoin Cash? It depends. It's market competition. Okay, so right now, because Segwit2x didn't happen, the reason it didn't happen is because the people who are pushing for it to happen, some of the big names, came out and said, hey, look, we're causing a lot of big confusion and division here. We don't want to divide the community, so we're pulling out. And they signaled to the miners, okay, please do not try to push Bitcoin 2x. We don't want it to happen. Oh. We don't, we don't, that's why the fork never happened. The big names, the big boys came out and said, please don't. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And and what happened was now the market expression about that was that Bitcoin was at 7,800. Yeah, Ball almost park. almost eight thousand. Fuck. Almost eight thousand. Yeah. Now it's down to six thousand, okay. and Bit Bitcoin Cash is was up to close to. I saw a peak at twenty five hundred. That could I could be wrong oh, about it, there. Oh, it's completely separate. It still It still lives on. Yes. Bitcoin Cash. Oh yeah. Okay. If you go to Coin Market Cap, which is the main place you'd go to check the prices of coins, uh -huh. Bit Bitcoin Cash is now number two. It passed Ethereum, which what? was number two. Yeah. What? What? How recent is that? That is very recent, no? Within the last couple of days. What? Okay, yeah. only because the, the fork didn't happen, right? Yes. And so the people that are mad at the core community for or wondering or just disagree with them, um, said, okay, well, we're gonna act in the marketplace, and they brought the price of Bitcoin Cash up. Okay, so, so people were, are selling their Bitcoin for Bitcoin Cash, and now here's, here's some now here's some consequences for that. Rich, miners can mine Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Now, what happens is, if the miners that were mining Bitcoin choose to mine Bitcoin Cash, the transaction, the Bitcoin transactions take longer because there are fewer miners to mine them. Uh huh. Oh. 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 Yeah, so like the other day, I think it was yesterday or the day before, there were 115,000 unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions because the miners were switching to Bitcoin Cash. Now, every once in a while, there's something called a difficulty adjustment. So if miners dropped away from the network, the uh, Bitcoin will automatically retarget to a new difficulty in order to so that they the, the network is trying to find a 10 minute block time so it estimates oh. how much processing power is out there and it adjusts the difficulty by making that mathematical problem easier or harder does that make sense uh, so to speak yeah 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 so the miners competing to guess this mathematical problem and the network can adjust to make that problem more or less difficult dependent on how much uh mining power there is out there and but and so what the pro what the bitcoin blockchain is trying to do 
is keep a regular 10 minute block time, which doesn't uh, always happen. Okay, okay. So uh, Bitcoin Cash, uh, can you can you transfer uh, value, whatever, uh, from Bitcoin Cash and, uh, to Bitcoin and vice versa? So what you would do or, is- or, would... or to fiat currency, like Bitcoin Cash to fiat currency and vice versa? You would go to an exchange that sells them both. Uh-huh. And say, okay, sell my Bitcoin, uh, and I want to buy Bitcoin Cash. Huh. You know. Okay, so Bitcoin yeah. Cash is very, very recent, right? Much more recent than Ethereum, Litecoin, and uh, whole, whole. It's only the, months old, like August. Only, shit, and it's already twice, uh, uh, already the second in worldwide global valuation. Is in the market, yes. Ah. Uh, yep. Wow. Okay, so be. Okay, so going forward a little bit there, because it, the, the fork didn't happen, do you think Bitcoin Cash will continue uh, it, it, its its merry way and increase valuation or it will slow down? Uh, number one, I don't know. But number two, I can guess, my best guess. Um, Go ahead. So whenever the fork didn't happen, I was assuming there'd be a one to $2,000 correction in the price of Bitcoin because people were buying Bitcoin only because they wanted to get that free Bitcoin oh, 2X. Oh, okay, right, you see, right. You see, you see what I'm saying? The, mar right. the price went up because you're like, ooh, free Bitcoin 2X. Let me buy some Bitcoin because I want yeah. some free 2X. Yeah, it's like a big bonus uh, freebie. Okay, uh-huh, so uh -huh. two, two things happened at once. People bought in on one expectation that didn't happen, and right, right. the market, uh, I think, wanted to send a signal to the core community that they were upset that things had, had gone this way, and that answer was to buy Bitcoin Cash, you, you know, to vote with your dollars, okay? Right. Right. So this is so, completely fascinating. Interest. I'm yeah. glad we. I'm glad we. We were doing this. Wow. Shit, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. So those okay. two things together, like the price of Bitcoin has has corrected close to two thousand, I think, if not more. And downwards. Downwards, and it could. It could go further. I don't know. Now, see, here's something that's going to happen though. There's a difficulty correction here soon. And that's going to cause Bitcoin Cash Network to slow down, the Bitcoin Cash Network to slow down. And that's going to cause the Bitcoin Network to speed up. Because what's going to happen is the Bitcoin Network is going to correct for all these miners that aren't there. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be really easy to mine. So it's going to be profitable for the miners to switch to the Bitcoin Network because they can mine transactions much faster. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So now what, it's just going to be like there's going to be a back and forth for a while uh, before equilibrium is met between both. Or one's going to whip the other one entirely and uh, there'll be the end of one, you know, which I doubt that'll happen. They'll probably both be there because they, now I could I could potentially see cash taking over core in the long run. Okay. Maybe, you know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So so uh so so this saying that you know only invest mm. money that you can't afford to lose, right? Still applies to to uh, to uh, to cryptocurrency in general, right? Because that, that that's how I I invest. I I invest money that I can afford yeah. to no, lose, abs right? Absolutely. Abs abs I didn't make this right. This is famous. I know Mike Maloney, all the uh, Peter Schiff, all the you know yeah. that that were uh, they're experts in in precious metals and stuff like that, or real estate even. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So I suggest we stop here, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay. All right.